hello, hello. Hi, dear ones. Welcome to another self-love sermon. July 7th, 2020, 7-7. Seven, seven. Lucky number seven. Let me know when you've arrived. Type a comment in the chat below so I can see that I am not alone. Welcome. Welcome, dear one. Hello, Claire. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Thanks for being here, for supporting me. Mm. I'm feeling good today. <laughs> I'm feeling in the flow. I'm feeling energized. I feel like every other time I pop on here, I'm like feeling tired. But today I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling just genuine gratitude in my whole being. Hi, Caitlin. Welcome. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. Hi, other Caitlin. <laughs> welcome. How are we doing tonight, dear ones? Hmm. As you all know, this is another self-love sermon. I go live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Ellen Gilbert. I'm a self-care coach. I'm the founder of Luminous Leanings, which is a self-compassion coaching practice and self-care blog, luminousleanings.com. And my intention for these sermons is really to create a community of people who are interrupting the cycles of suffering in their inner life. So to really examine our thought patterns, the bodily sensations, the beliefs that we have about ourselves and the world, and how they create suffering, unnecessary suffering in our lives. And to create habits. How can we step out of the suffering? How can we feel good? How can we connect to our worthiness? And create the world we all long to see. Because I believe it starts right here. It starts with looking inward. And with applying that sweet salve of self-care. Only then can we awaken from the delusion of striving, of unworthiness, all of these delusions that we face and actually make an impact and have genuine compassion for others. So that's my intention. That's why I am here every week giving this one hour of my time and the things that I've learned on this journey and if you feel compelled to support the work of Luminous Leanings, I invite you to make a donation, sharing the link here on Facebook. And also, dear ones, sharing a reminder to sign up. Uh, sign up for reminders every week, just so you never miss a sermon. And if you do miss a live sermon, you'll get the replay to your inbox as a video recording and as a podcast, as an audio recording. So those are sort of my housekeeping items. Hi, Daniela, welcome back, dear one. Hi, Emily, welcome. <laughs> welcome everyone on Facebook and on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks for being here for another self-love sermon. I'm excited to dive in tonight. And if you are watching on Facebook, a tip that someone gave me last week was that you can you can hit share. You can hit who knew you can hit share and your friends will be notified that you're watching this live video, even if they don't follow me on Facebook and they'll be invited to watch along with you. So then you can see who's watching with you and engage them in a discussion about self-care and self-love. 
spread the word, invite your friends, let them know what's up. Cause I'm going to be here every Tuesday night at eight o'clock Eastern time. All right, dear ones, tonight's topic is pushing and pulling. That's the title of this talk <laughs> or the tug of war, the inner tug of war. And what does that mean? So I think we have two modes. I'm told by neuroscientists <laughs> that we as humans really have two modes, two ways of being typically. We're either clinging to what gives us that dopamine hit, that feel good sensation, or we're resisting. We're pushing away from what we're afraid is going to kill us from what we're afraid is going to harm us in some way. So that pushing and pulling, that tug of war. And my intention for this talk is that we can kind of examine why does this happen and how does it create suffering in our experience and how can we step outside of it, yeah, and have peace. That's the goal. Bring a little peace to yourself tonight. And it's very practical as well. We're going to practice some breathe, breath work, breathing, and we're going to practice self-compassion as always, embodiment. We're going to do a little mantra work. So to start us off right away, I'm going to light our candle as I always do. This is a sermon, a self-love sermon. We are at the Church of Self-Love tonight, so we got to have a little ritual, a little candle lighting. So... As long as this flame burns, may we all be practicing self-love and self-care. And I have a new friend here. I don't know if I can show you all. This is Luna, the newest member of my family. Can I show you on the Facebook as well? She does not like when I light a match. She gets very scared. Anyway, I can't really show you on the Facebook and I apologize. <laughs> but I've been posting pictures of her like a mad woman because she's so cute and I love her. But every time I light a match, she's like panicking. Anywho, so now that we've lit our candle, we've started off. Hi, Micah. Welcome. Welcome, dear. Glad you're here. Let's check in with a little intention. Let's set our intention for the next hour. Why are you here? Why did you show up tonight? What are you hoping to walk away from this night feeling? Yeah, what do you want to feel? What do you want to feel at the end of the day or if you're in another time zone? Just what do you want to feel within the hour I want to feel connected to this community, this growing community. I want to feel hmm, like I'm channeling my intuition and sharing it with the world. That feels really good. I want to reconnect to my worthiness. What do you want to feel, dear ones? I'd love to hear. Type it in the chat below with the understanding that I will be reading it out with your first name. What do you want to feel? Why are you here? Intention is a powerful thing. Remember, it's an energetic boomerang. Put it out there. You just might get it. And now Luna's crying. I don't know why. She, she never made noise until like three days ago. She started making this whining noise when she wants pets and belly rubs. We all love you. We're all here for you. She's, she's getting the feel. Micah wants to feel at peace. Oh, good. We're going to talk about peace tonight, Micah. We're going to talk about peace. Exactly that. That's a beautiful intention. Anyone else would like to share? I would love to hear, but I will move on. We're going to start off with a quick body scan and a little breath work. So let's all, oh, I got another one. Caitlin wants to feel peace and clarity. Beautiful clarity. Yes. Mm, beautiful intentions, dear ones. So let's come into stillness. 
sitting up straight and tall yet relaxed feeling the feet on the floor connecting back to the earth back to the gravity the weight of your legs anchoring in here for an embodied experience of this present moment. Soften the gaze or close the eyes if it feels okay. And we're just gonna examine the body for any sign of resistance. So intentionally scanning the body, starting with the feet for any sign of resistance, resisting the present moment, resisting the ground below you, or any muscles tightening and tensing up with an intention to flee, to escape. Breathe normally, just scanning the legs. Our feet are very sensitive. And when we touch the earth with our feet, our feet scan the environment for threat. So that resistance kind of begins in the lower body, working its way up. And as you know, we can assume anything is a threat that creates cortisol in the system. Just feeling any tightness, tension, lack of space in the body inflammation, pain, intensity. Becoming aware. Aware of where it's located, what it feels like. Quality of sensation. You might also feel neutrality, numbness, a lack of sensation, and that's okay. You're not doing it wrong. Whatever arises, just allow it as part of your experience, inviting it to commune with you. With this awareness on any resistance in the body, we're gonna practice square breathing, which is breathing into the count of four, holding for a count of four, exhaling for the count of four, and holding again for the count of four. Okay. You can imagine going in a square along each action, each breath. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. And don't worry about actively releasing the resistance, but just see how your experience shifts with this awareness and with the breath work. So we'll begin breathing in through the nose to the count of four, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, in, pause, exhale, 
pause. In. Hold. Exhale. Pause. In. Hold. Exhale. Pause. In. Hold. Exhale. Pause. One more time. In. Hold. Exhale. Pause. Allowing the breath to return to normal. Feeling any shifts in the parts of the body that were previously resistant. Noticing without judgment. Did anything shift? If not those parts, other parts, or the mind, the quality of the mind, the quality of the heart, the quality of the spirit. Square breathing is a great practice because you focus on the count of four. And that focus can really keep the mind away from the delusion, right? It can keep the mind away from the story and anchor it in what's right here and what, what's present, what's real, what's happening. And of course, the breath is so powerful as well. It's our most close tool in the war on delusion. <laughs> it's the breath in your lungs. It's always with you. So I'm wondering, dear ones, if you'd share your experience uh, with the square breathing, with the resistance, if there's anything from that opening ritual practice that you would like to share with the group, dear ones. I'm feeling lighter already and more centered and ready to talk about pushing and pulling. <laughs> All right, so as I said, we have these two modes. We cling and we resist, right? This is sort of basic instinct animal instinct within us don't don't take any offense luna but i know that <laughs> we observe this in animals in the wild right this constant search for food sex <laughs> uh anything that feels good for her it's attention it's belly rubs and treats <laughs> and then that pulling that resistance away from anything we could perceive as a threat, anything we could perceive as harmful, even if it's just modern stress, right? Our nervous systems perceive it as life or death. And so I think we've talked about before, the mind also loves to label good and bad, good and bad. Everything is good or bad. It's the same. It's the same with our clinging and our resistance. We want to grasp and hold on to and attach our identity to, that's the ego, anything we perceive as good. And we want to push, resist, flee, escape from anything we perceive as bad. So when you think about it, Clinging is really what's going on even in the resistance. Because even when we're resisting a negative experience, we're clinging to the idea that there could be a more positive experience out there. Right? It's that attachment that Buddhism talks about. The ego attachment, the grasping, the clutching... 
I've heard a story of some monks at a silent retreat or a monastery kind of with the people that were participating and this one monk would love to go up to someone who was participating in the retreat who was just you know furrowed brow looking so upset and so disheartened and would just put a hand on his shoulder and say you must be very attached you must be very attached I love this I think about this in my own practice Anytime we're suffering, right? You can think of it as attachment. But you can also think of it as resistance. Even those moments when you're clinging, grasping, holding on to something or the hope of something that's not necessarily he even here anymore or never was, uh, you can think of that as resisting what is. You're resisting the present moment. You're resisting what's true. And in some ways, you're resisting yourself, right? We're going to talk more about that as well. Caitlin says, feeling more calm. Micah says, I love square breathing. I've used it to stop panic attack multiple times. I noticed a lot of tension release from my shoulders. Oh, good, dear ones. I'm so glad to hear that. How beautiful. Mm, how empowering, just something we can all practice at any time, right? We have these tools. I think in our mind, we like to think that, oh, that must, that's too simple. That won't solve it. And so we don't even try because it actually takes courage and you're all so courageous. So thank you for being here. Mm. So why do we do this? Why do we push and pull? We're trying to feel good. We're trying to survive right? That's the deep heart intention of the tug of war that's going on. We're trying to live. We're trying to live. We want life affirming experiences. And yet, and yet, the way of getting there is so misguided. Because clinging and resistance are anything but life affirming. They actually take us away from the life that's occurring right here. From the experience that we most crave. They are a bunch of smoke and mirrors to keep us away from the truth. Why does that happen? Like what's the mechanics of it? Well, you know who's pull in the strings behind the curtain it's the ego <laughs> again our ego wants control right we know this the ego wants to solve all the problems to be the savior of the world and it really wants to see itself reflected in everything around it but the control is the big one right so anytime we're resisting the present moment we're trying to control our own suffering we're saying oh can't touch that that's too scary i'm not even willing to be courageous to go there right because instead i'm going to stay safe and how do we stay safe through escape or through grasping at something around the corner, an imagined saving grace, an imagined solution, imagine night on a white horse. Yeah. We do this all the time. Constant, constant, constant. Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now says that the only thing that's real is the present moment. Even our projections of the future or the past like even our memories are tainted and flawed because it's just a projection. It's just a memory. It's not the real experience. What you remember might not be what someone else remembers or it might not be what you remember in five years. It's not the true thing that the image represents. So it's actually insanity, he says, to spend our time caught up in future thinking or I like to call it future tripping because we're tripping on the drug 
of future scenarios in order to control or reminiscing in the past, right? He says it's insane because the only thing that's real is the present moment, is this experience right now, like this one. This one, and this one, <laughs> like this breath, and the next one, and the next one, that's it, that's it. How profound, how easily we forget. I need the reminder regularly. And what do we do when we forget? We don't judge. That just adds to our suffering. <sighs> so what a fun dance we do <laughs> with the ego, right? The ego is trying to keep us feeling good or feeling numb because that's what ends up happening, isn't it? When we numb ourselves to the potential threat, we also numb ourselves to the potential joy, the potential pleasure the potential feeling good. We even resist pleasure actively because we either believe we're not worthy or we believe that if we imagine getting it, we would be further let down when it doesn't come about. Can you grasp how, how very tragic that is and also how very untrue that is? As we talked about last week, getting what we want, feeling pleasure, feeling good, it starts with imagining. It starts with the courage to dream and to envision. And you don't have to wait when you imagine feeling good. You get to bring it into your body's experience right here, right now. And that's only through the present moment that we have that. You see? Hmm. So we've got the ego pulling these threads. We've also got society. Y'all know I love to harp on society, but it's showing us constant examples of perfection and making us think that we're supposed to strive for that. And if we're striving for, for, for perfection, how could we ever rest in the present moment? We're either going to be clinging to some vision or hope or idea or image of what we should be, again, perfection, or we're going to be resisting everything around us. We're going to be resisting really ourselves because what we're resisting is imperfection, flaws, messing up, making mistakes, um, not reaching that ideal place. We're resisting what it is to be human. We're resisting what's real because we don't trust it. We don't trust what's real. We don't trust ourselves with the present moment. We don't trust ourselves with the body to drop into the body. We don't trust ourselves with the planet to ground and connect to the earth. There's some real wounding that has happened there that has severed our belonging to the planet, to our bodies, to each other, and to ourselves. Because we don't trust ourselves with the life that's right here. So that's why we push and we pull. This constant tug of war. How exhausting. <sighs> How exhausting. So let's just drop in for a little practice right now. As always, drop any questions in the chat. Drop any reflections. I would love to hear, dear ones. Let's talk about the results of clinging. Okay? We're going to talk about clinging now. So let's drop in. Take a breath in, sigh it out the mouth. <sighs> Just become aware. Is there something in your mind that you're grasping for today or yesterday? 
or right now, something that you're believing. If things were just this way, like everything would be better. Everything would be different. I would be saved. Maybe I would be worthy. I would belong. I would be accepted. I would be enough. I could finally start living. What is that thing for you? What is your knight in shining armor belief? What is your saving grace that you're clinging to and grasping? Just keep that in mind. Continuing to breathe, focusing on that thing and the sensation of grasping. Can you feel it in the body? What does it feel like? How is it showing up for you? Once you have a really clear picture of that, we're going to practice a little breath work again. Breathing in, we're going to notice the attachment. Breathing out, we're going to attempt to actively release it through releasing the muscles, through breathing into the area of the body where we feel it most, through bringing our spaciousness, our compassion, our understanding, and our forgiveness. It's a tall order, but it's just an inhale and an exhale. So let's try, dear ones, breathing in the attachment, sighing out the release, breathing in, One more time. Release. Relax. Mm. Mm. I felt it in my head. I felt like an attachment in the mind, like physically in the face up here. And then the release, I actually felt a bit lightheaded, which can happen with breath work. <laughs> but I definitely feel the release. I feel, feel super calm and chill now. I feel really relaxed in case you couldn't notice. <laughs> How do y'all feel? I want to hear. What was that like? Like, where was it showing up in the body? Were you surprised by your white knight belief? Did you know that you were clinging to this thing so tightly? Did you know that you were believing that only after you got this thing could you really start living? And what would you like to say to yourself now? If anything in there you want to share, hmm, please let me know in the comments. Hmm. So what happens when we cling? We get tunnel vision, right? We can only see that thing. Everything else fades to the background, including the present moment, 
including what's real, including our loved ones, including our basic needs. We miss out. We miss out on the way the wind is moving through the trees outside my window right now. The way the sunlight is shifting and casting shadows on the roof of my garage. We miss out on the way this lovely candle smells in front of me. The feeling of holding my own hand and having this skin and this gateway. This experience of being alive of being at this point in my life, for me being 30 years old, this season, or this Tuesday, this July 7th, 2020, like this is the last one of those. And the first one, how beautiful. How sad to miss out on it. The good news is we can always make the shift. We're going to talk about that as well. Don't worry. It's not all bad news. But this is what happens when we cling. We get the tunnel vision. We believe that when we get that thing, then we'll be happy. Maybe when we get that thing, then we'll practice mindfulness. Then we'll practice presence. Then we'll practice compassion, love, joy. Then we'll allow ourselves to relax and to let in the sensations of being alive, right? But what happens when we get that thing, dear ones? Like, have you ever experienced this? We finally get that thing we were striving for and it's empty. Empty. Like, it's nothing like we imagined it would be. And there's almost a fear that we'll lose it or that a guilt that we should have never gotten it, that we're not worthy. Or what will this say about me? If people see that I have this thing, I won't belong. Or even if we have a sliver of sweetness, a sliver of joy at receiving this thing, there's a sense that I just want more. I just want to experience that again. This is how addiction happens. I once heard an incredible Dharma talk at my local Sangha by someone who is in addiction recovery. And he told the story of working with, I think it was a, a meditation teacher. And they asked him, like, what is it? you really want like what's underneath the drug use the alcohol what's underneath the addiction like what do you want and he said more i just want more this insatiable hunger for more where does that come from That comes from a belief that what we need is outside of ourselves and that we have to somehow measure up to get that thing. Both of these are lies. Total bullshit. Everything you need is right here. This is profound. This is profound. So we can spend our lives looking outside ourselves, looking for a higher power, looking for meaning, looking for love, looking for acceptance and belonging outside of ourselves, right? When I get this thing, I can check a box and then I'll belong. Then I can live. Then I'll be worthy. It's bullshit. You're inherently worthy. You have access to the present moment right now, don't you? 
look around. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you feel? What do you taste? What do you hear? You are worthy because you're experiencing the present moment right now and it contains what you need. Get acquainted with presence. Get acquainted with embodiment, with mindfulness. Get acquainted with your true nature. The one who has space to include the present moment. And so let's turn to resistance, shall we? What happens when we resist? When we push away. We push away because we're afraid, right? Fear is really driving that that one. Fear is driving both of these, but I, I feel it as white hot fear with resistance. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Star Trek, but the Borg is this like alien species that kind of consumes all that it comes into contact with and something that they say the message that they put out is resistance is futile and i love that because it is futile it's futile in our inner practice as well it's not only futile because there are things we just don't have control over and so resisting them really doesn't work. <laughs> but it's also futile because what we resist persists. Have you ever noticed that? When you focus on what you don't want, you're spending all your time thinking about what you don't want. You're not actively thinking about what you do want, thereby drawing it towards yourself. So if you say, oh, I don't want to be stressed today, you know, I just don't want to have a bad day. I don't want to feel bad today. You're focused on the bad when you say, I want to feel relaxed today. I want to feel joyful and good in my body. Look at the change in my face. Listen to the change and shift in my voice. You're focusing on what you do want, the positive, right? And so what you resist persists, and resistance really is futile. You resist not only the dangerous, the uncomfortable, the painful, the sad, the things you don't want to see. You also resist the goodness of life. Like, this is a winner-take-all game. It is all or nothing in this tug-of-war. When you resist, you resist pleasure. You resist goodness because you're resisting the present moment. Remember, our only access point to feeling, to living, to experiencing is right here, right now. Let's practice that together, dear one. So let's again come to stillness, closing the eyes, deep breath in and out. Letting the breath be normal. I invite you to ask yourself what are you feeling that you don't want to feel this way? Where is the sensation of resistance in your life? What are you believing? about your need to push this thing away. Mm. 
Where is it showing up? I don't want to feel this way. Where is that coming up for you? Or things should be different. How and where in the body is it showing up for you? Just a inquiry. Women especially hold tension in their hips, the psoas, the hip flexors, the hamstrings, the glutes, men as well. I've just heard that women do more so. The shoulders, of course, that's a classic. Where are your holding patterns tonight, dear one? And with that place in the body and mind, maybe bring a hand there. This is quite intense work. I invite you to ask yourself, what am I unwilling to feel? What am I unwilling to feel? Through the hand, through the breath, through the awareness, can you extend some loving kindness to this part of yourself tonight. Witnessing the suffering and bringing compassion to meet it. That is all you have to do. Breathe into this part of the body. Releasing the tension on the exhale. And on the inhale, feel, filling the space with your imagined loving kindness. Maybe seeing it as a white light or sparkly shimmery, maybe another color, maybe a warm sensation. Filling this area with awareness, love, space. And of course, noticing the shift that happens in the body, in the mind, when we practice. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. Slowly blinking the eyes open. Good work. <laughs> hmm. Micah, I see your comment. What are you <laughs> referring to? I would love to know. Claire says shoulder blades. Okay. Tell us more, Claire. Tell us more. What what was your experience? I'd love to hear. The shit's powerful, y'all. The shit works. Why do you think I've dedicated my life to talking about self-compassion? <laughs> because the experience in my own being was so profound, it changed my entire life. Not only did it make me want to live, but it made me want to live abundantly, to flourish, to 
remember my true state, which is joy. I feel joy every single day. And it's not forced. Sometimes, of course, I suffer and I grasp and I resist. But I practice self-compassion every day because I witness my resistance and my clinging with love. I say, oh, Ellen, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through this. It's not your fault. This is your patterning. This is human nature. This is social conditioning. These are the woundings that every human on the planet is subjected to. And I breathe and I hold space and I make space. This is not light lifting, but it is so worth it. Micah says, being unwilling to feel so many things. <laughs> yes. She said, well, shit. <laughs> and then she said, it's the unwillingness to feel so many things. Yeah. 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 I love that inquiry. What are you unwilling to feel? Because it, you automatically have to feel it when you identify it, right? The awareness, the power of awareness. And then I think it also brings this sense of compassion. Like, oh, I was unwilling to feel it. And like, why? Oh, because it hurts. Oh, well, I can, I can understand that, right? The bridge of understanding. I can understand. And then what I understand, I can have compassion for. Oh, Claire says shoulder blades where she's holding the tension. Yes, dear one. Yeah, that's a big, big area for that. Mm, your precious shoulder blades. Mm. All right. So I still had a lot I wanted to cover. We're running out of time. <laughs> so let's talk a minute about escape. When we resist, we're really escaping, right? And we all know how to numb out. This is the one of the biggest tactics of the ego is to get us to numb out, to not feel pain. Thereby, we don't feel pleasure either. So escape doesn't meet our needs. It just doesn't. Pausing meets our needs. Self-care meets our needs. Intentional rest and relaxation meet our needs. But numbing and escaping do not meet our needs. Unless we're in an active hostage violent situation escape is not the answer can you become aware of your patterning can you become aware of when you're escaping without judgment with care with an attitude of i'm sorry i'm sorry you feel that you have to escape but let me let my higher self take the wheel and show you that presence is safe presence is okay Because when we escape, we're believing that being present is so dangerous, that being in the body is so dangerous. And so we stay disembodied, which is actually much more dangerous. We're starting to learn the consequences on a health level of inflammation in the body, of st chronic stress in the body. I recently watched a great documentary called My Year of Living Mindfully, and they talk about how the developed world, like 80% of people, you know, experience stress or depression or anxiety. And that the reason you would think, you would think that, you know, money and wealth was all it took to be happy. But it's clearly not because we have this chronic stress problem <laughs> in the West. And... This is because we're disembodied. This is because we're not present. We're striving and we're resisting. We're clinging and attaching to what we think is going to make us feel better, often the money, the power. And we're resisting what's right here, which, yes, includes some pain and some discomfort, some stickiness, some ickiness. But it also includes below all that, like so much goodness so much depth 
If you have any questions, please post them in the chat. <sighs> so how do we practice this? How do we put all of this into practice? Like what happens? How do we do it? How do we step outside of the push pull? How do we step outside of the tug of war? Because I'll tell you, this is a battle that is 100% created by the ego. It is a product of the mind. It is a product of the ego mind, I should say. How do we bring peace to our mind? Michael wanted to feel peace tonight, as did Caitlin, I think. We can train our minds for peace, y'all, but we got to carve the neural pathways. If this is new, and I think it's new for most of us, most humans, especially in the West, if this is new, then we have to practice with non-judgment. Because if we judge it, we're going to think I'm bad at it and we don't want to do what we're bad at. And we're going to give up. So keep pushing, <laughs> not pushing in the resisting way, but pushing in the practicing. Push through the discomfort. How do we do it? We First, we ground and we embody. We inhabit the body. We connect to the earth. The things that were severed, right? We talked about that in the beginning. Our belonging to the body was severed. Our belonging to the earth was severed. So we have to reconnect. These are our sources. They're bigger than us. They're a part of us. We are not separate. Separation is a lie. So reconnect is the first step. And then awareness. You know how much I love to talk about awareness. That's number two. You can become aware through meditation, inquiry, journaling, Anything that brings you closer to the truth about what's going on in your mind. And then number three, reconnect to the intention. I don't want to suffer. I say this to myself. I say this to myself out loud all day long. Luna thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> I'll notice oh, I'm in a thought pattern. Oh, I'm in a I'm in a push pull tug of war of my own ego's creation and I'll say I don't want to suffer <laughs> and it helps pull me out of it you know what I mean like it helps pull me out of it so that's so it's the connect become aware remember intention and number four you can visualize yourself stepping outside of the tug of war battle. So let's say you've got like something you're resisting, something you're craving or clinging to on the other side, and you're just in the middle holding the rope and you're being kind of pulled about. You can imagine yourself <laughs> letting go of the rope, stepping out, Maybe you're watching, maybe the tug of war is still kind of there, but you're no longer being pushed and pulled. I think it's a Rumi quote that says, instead of being tossed by the waves, I realized I was the, the ocean. It's kind of like that. You get so identified to the pushing and the pulling, to what you're clinging to or what you're resisting, you forget you're the whole thing. You're, you're much bigger than this. You're the whole ocean. You're not just the wave. So visualizing yourself stepping out of it and what can help with that is active relaxation practices with stepping into nature looking for a healthy distraction, okay? Which I don't think of as an escape so much as an interruption. Nature, community, prayer, creativity. These are four really good tools. So number one, reconnect to the earth and your body. Number two, become aware. Number three, remember your intention. I don't want to suffer. Number four, 
visualize yourself stepping out of the tug of war number and then within number four interrupt it just interrupt it with something healthy reach for something better nature community prayer creativity meditation journaling any of these things would be fabulous so dear ones that's all i have for tonight just a little closing ritual we can do together is to just kind of shake shaking the wrists shaking the arms shaking the shoulders gently shaking the neck if it feels good shaking the body just shaking it out you can imagine just releasing the tension, releasing the things you are striving for, clinging to, attached to, the things you were unwilling to feel, the things you were resisting, <laughs> and come back. Come back to this moment. Come back to your body. Come back to what's real. Come back to the present. Come back to the experience of being alive today, right now, this moment. What a beautiful opportunity you've been given, dear one. What a beautiful gift you've been given. Like, allow yourself to shake and release and land back in that beautiful, precious gift. I think sometimes we resist the sweet because there's also some bitter. It's almost like nothing is 100% sweet. There's always a bitterness because we know it's going to go away. But everything is transient. Everything passes away. There's a part of you that is eternal, that ocean mind. Don't get identified with the wave. You're the whole ocean, baby. You can tap into what is eternal, what is included what is part of the universe part of everyone everywhere part of this planet this earth you are not separate that is bullshit you belong you are worthy i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of you for showing up tonight for being here i'm excited to see where this takes you please let me know what you're walking away from tonight with, dear ones. We'd love to hear. As always, I'll be here next week. I invite you to this coming week just really become acquainted with the tug of war. Maybe don't even try to interrupt it yet. Notice the outcome, the emptiness, the suffering. Let that strengthen your resolve to interrupt it next time without judgment, with an intention to not suffer. All right, I've talked long enough, dear ones. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. As always, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being part of the Luminous Leanings community. Please share this with your friends. Let them know I'm going live every Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And I love you. Don't suffer. It's not worth it. All right, I'm going to blow out my candle. Yay! Good night, dear ones.